Hello, this is Ben Baxter with Accent Software. Today we're going to take a look at some of the quality control capabilities within Microsoft Dynamics NAV or Dynamics 365 Business Central. They are one and the same product, just one is in the cloud and the other one is on-premise. So whichever platform you're on, this is the available quality control capabilities. So what we're going to do first is step through some of the basic setup. I have chosen to use a raw material for our QC test today. You can do the same process for the finished good output. So when I produce a part, I can do a QC inspection on that before I ship it to the customer. So in this case, we're using a raw material. I have set one up. It is a lot tracked item, which means when I receive it in, I will be recording a lot to the item. I could also be doing this with a serialized item so that I know that the QC test is done on a specific batch or a specific item, depending on lot versus serial number. In this case, the item is a component on a production order. So what we are going to do is first purchase the item into a QC or a quarantine location based on the demand from that production order. The production order is using the main warehouse. So what we're going to have happen is we have demand on our main warehouse for this item, but it has to go through a QC inspection. So what the system does is it actually creates demand in our QC location that the item has to go there first, get inspected, and then move to the usable inventory or our main warehouse for the production. So first, what we need to do is, is verify that there is demand. So you can see on the right-hand side of my screen, I have my supply and demand fact boxes. And I can see that our net available, based on the available on-hand quantity less the requirements, is a negative 10. So I want the system to suggest to me, I need to, one, purchase 10 to my QC location, and the second part of that is I need to be able to transfer it from that QC location to my usable warehouse, which in this case is my blue warehouse. So that's what I want to have happen. So we're gonna go back to our role center and we're gonna come up here to our planning worksheet. So the planning worksheet is my MRP engine, MPS engine. It allows me to have the system make suggestions on what needs to happen based on the various supply and demands within the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and calculate my plan. In this case, I'm going to filter it down to my very specific item just to reduce some of the clutter for all of the other demonstration items that I have set up in my system. And that way we can see exactly what is happening for the QC item that we're working with. So I'm gonna say, okay, it's gonna go verify. Okay, we have demand from a production order. We need to create supply. So first, it knows that we have a blue location where the demand is. Well, the blue location, because it's a QC item, is replenished from the QC location. So the QC location also has demand. So what the system is doing is it's saying, first we need to create a transfer, which is saying from the QC location, populate the blue. So our blue is fulfilled by the QC process, the inspection, and then eventually transferring it over. And so we're purchasing to our QC location, we will run our test, and then we will transfer the item to the blue location. And that way we have our quantity on hand available for that production order when it starts. So when I say go ahead and carry out the action, what this is doing is creating both the purchase order and the transfer order so that it's a, a two-step process and it's creating both steps within the process so that I don't have to manually create anything behind the scenes. So what we're first gonna do is go and take a look at that purchase order. Now I'm not gonna go through the whole purchase order process. I'm simply going to open up the, the one in question and I'm going to step through what we have to do as they, the QC person to verify that this needs tested. So I have my item to our location for the quantity that's required. Now I can see here that QC is required. That is a check mark that is on the line. That's a visual indication to me as the receiving person or the purchasing agent that I will have to do a quality check inspection on this item. We're gonna step into the future a little bit and say that this item is now coming in my door. 
And so what I need to do is I need to record the lot information. So remember that we're doing a quality check against a specific lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up, record my item tracking. So we're going to say that this is lot, uh, we're in the uh, 18, so we'll do lot 18 and we'll do uh, 4872. We'll just do some random numbers and we're going to do all 10. So they're all in one lot. Now I could do multiple lots. So if, if there was a quantity of 10 for the order and I needed to do five uh, per lot, then I could always do that. Now in this case, we're gonna keep it simple. We're just gonna have one lot be recorded here. So what that does is allows the system to now know what the lot is or the tag number, however you identify the raw material. When it comes onto my QC location, it has a specific identification to it. So we're gonna come over, just verify that our quantity to receive is there, give the system a posting date, and we'll go ahead and post the receipt of those goods. So now my quality control location has 10 on hand with a specific lot. Behind the scenes, I could have a, a lot test set up and ready to go for my testing. Now in that case, I don't have any kind of automated process set up to do my quality control test creation. So we're gonna just go and create that test automatically. So we're gonna come in, say new, let it number our uh, test and select the item that we want to test. Now we go ahead and select on our test what lot we're going to test. So in this case, I'm gonna do my 4872, which we set up for this example, and I'm gonna record how many. So we're gonna test 10%, so one of the 10. And then all I do is I come up to my QC test ribbon and I click get specification. And what that's going to do is it's going to run out to my item 5040, which is a QC required item, so it has a specification ready to go. And I get the option to do all specifications or maybe just the mandatory specifications in case I have to get this through the inspection process very quickly. So in this case, there's not many, so I'm going to just say yes, which will pull in the three required specifications. Now, if I'm not the person doing the test or I'm gonna do the test later, I can simply mark this as ready for testing. And then I can come back to it later when I actually have the item in front of me and can do my test. Now, if I'm going to start doing my test, one, I would open this card back up and I'd run my testing worksheet. So this is a paper document uh, where it can mark, here's the measurements that you're testing, how you're supposed to test them, and what their limits are. Some people choose to have the, the measurement upper and lower limits taken off. They just want to see the actual results regardless. They don't want to have any influence on the testing. So you can have that. It's just a, a report in the system that you can modify. So with that being said, we're going to come back and, and record their results. So in this case, when they did the height measurement, uh, they came back and said it was 9.46 uh, inches and then the weight was 1.32 pounds. And then for the result, it's a visual inspection. So in this case, I have a list of visual cues in terms of what I saw. So is it in perfect condition, slightly damaged, or unusable? And you can see that the non-conforming value is this unusable option. Now in this case, we're gonna mark it as perfect. So our inspection at this point is all in conformance. All of our measurements were in conformance. Had any of them not been, then we would have seen a non-conformance flag happen. It would mark the line in red, and we may come back and have this as a secondary review needed in order to test the item again. But in this case, we're in good shape. We're gonna go ahead and move this again forward in process, so ready for review. Our quality manager is gonna come over, inspect it, make sure everything happened properly, and that we use the right gauges or measurements and tools needed to perform the test. Once everything is finished, then they can come up, certify it. In this case, I'm gonna do a certified final just to move it forward. And you can see it indicates that this is a passed test. Everything checked out, the lot is good, we need to move it over to our blue location. So now we have a certified tested items sitting in our QC location and we want to complete the process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to transfer and that's gonna come up and it's gonna find the transfer order that we created earlier on in the process. So we wanna verify one, 
that the item tracking is still there. So for our shipment is the lot number there. And that is in fact the lot that we wanted to pick. So we're gonna leave that alone and we're gonna go ahead and ship this out. So I'm gonna do a post ship. Now the item has now gone down in my quantity on hand for my QC location, right? It's on a truck or it's moving, it's, it's on a fork truck, it's somewhere in the system. And then depending on your different locations and requirements, that could have been a warehouse shipment, it could have been any number of controls needed in order to do it. I have simplified the process just to make sure that we can get through this in a reasonable amount of time. So now that we've shipped it, uh, the next process is at the blue location, we're going to receive it. So we're gonna receive our quantity of 10. I again need to come in and verify that the uh, lot information is correct. So I can see that when I receive this, yes, I can verify that the tag number is correct. All the quantity is there. That is what I'm going to receive. So we'll go ahead and post the receipt. That will close out our transfer. So you can see the transfer has been deleted, which means it's posted all the way through. Our inspection is passed. There's nothing more for us to do here. So really our, our next step in the process is to go to our production order and verify that that's in fact what we wanted to do. So we can go ahead and go to the the line for that quality control item. And I can go ahead and assign at this point the item tracking lines for that to say, let's go ahead and pick that QC compliant to so notice when I'm selecting my uh, available quantity lot number, it is in fact in compliance. So that is the one I want, we'll say okay. And I have now received, inspected, and assigned the item to the production order that it was initially needed for. So with that, that's the QC process. I've created demand by having it as a component on a production order. I have created both the transfer requirement for moving it from my quarantine or QC inspection location to my usable warehouse. And I've created the purchase to bring it into my QC ran the test on the item, verified that everything was compliant, and then processed moving it over and assigning it to my production order. So that when they get ready to run that production order, when it gets released to the floor, they have a lot that is ready to go and assigned to that order. So with that being said, that is the quality control location. I know I went pretty quick. These can be long drawn out processes, uh, but hopefully you get a understanding of the capability, the functionality that's there. I didn't go through all of the setup. There's obviously a lot more to do with the specifications and how you assign those and a lot more options and flexibility that I just can't get into in a short video like this. So if you do have questions, I would really appreciate you reaching out to us. Uh, my phone number and email will be uh, available at the end of this video, probably at the bottom of the screen. Don't forget to like our video, subscribe to our channels. We try to bring good, high quality content around Dynamics NAV and Dynamics 365 Business Central. So with that being said, hope you liked the video. Please feel free to share it and uh, subscribe and get educated with more great information. Thank you very much.